In our previous video, we discussed the Arrhenius equation. That equation was going to give us an indication of how things like our activation energy and temperature for a given reaction were going to have an impact on the rate of our reaction. So when we talk about temperature having a large impact on rate, that's where it impacts our rate law, is how it impacts K through the Arrhenius equation. The Arrhenius equation can be rearranged into two formats. Derivations for those can be found in your textbook, but both of these formats are useful in determining activation energy. Our first equation here says the natural log of K2 over K1 equals negative EA over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So EA is our activation energy, R is our ideal gas constant, it's in terms of energy, so it's going to be 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, which means that T, our temperature, must be in Kelvin. Now, this particular equation allows us to calculate the activation energy if K is known for only two temperatures. Our second format says the natural log of K equals negative EA over R times 1 over T plus the natural log of A. This particular format allows us to calculate the activation energy if K is known for many temperatures. Anytime we know multiple data points, we're able to get a more accurate picture of behavior. And so anytime we can get more data points, that's more accurate. Notice that this second version has a y equals mx plus b format. Anytime something has that y equals mx plus b format, that means it's a graphical method. So we would use those multiple data points to create a graph. And again, graphs are going to give us a more accurate picture. So if we were to graph the natural log of K versus 1 over T. So remember our equation, we had natural log of K, that's our Y, equals negative EA over R times 1 over T. 1 over T is my X. So if we were to graph natural log of K versus 1 over temperature, so that's my Y and my X, we're asked what information we could determine from the slope. So in this equation, my slope is negative EA over R. And then we're asked what could we obtain from the y-intercept. So this portion here is my y-intercept, which means we can determine the natural log of A from that y-intercept. Now, if I'm getting that information from a graph from my slope and my y-intercept, that means activation energy or my and my frequency factor, A, can be determined graphically. So the information we would need would be our slope And in order to get that, we would need K for varying temperatures. So we had K for varying temperatures. We can graph natural log of K versus 1 over temperature. Our slope tells us negative EA over R, so we can rearrange that to solve for the activation energy. And we're going to get A from that y-intercept. Now, if we know K for only two values, then we would use equation 1. But we want to avoid equation 1 if we can. We only want to use that if we only know two K values. If we know more than two, we're going to graph it. But we can look at an example of having only two K values. So for a certain reaction, we're told that K equals 6.08 times 10 to the negative fourth at 45 degrees Celsius 
and it's 3.35 times 10 to the negative third at 60 degrees Celsius. And we want the activation energy. So we want activation energy, we're given K values. Activation energy and K are always related through the Arrhenius equation, but we've got three formats. The only one that has two different K values is using equation one. So we're using that format of natural log of K2 over K1 equals negative EA over R times 1 over T2 minus 1 over T1. So we can go ahead and plug into our equation. K2 is going to refer to the K at the higher temperature. So we'll have a natural log of K2, which is a 3.35 times 10 to the negative third, seconds to the minus one, divided by 6.08, times 10 to the negative fourth, seconds to the minus one. That equals negative EA, which is what we're looking for, divided by R of 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin, times one over T2, minus 1 over T1, and those temperatures need to be in Kelvin. So remember, to get Kelvin, we're going to add 273 to my Celsius temperature. So I add 273 to 45, I'm going to get 318 Kelvin. I add 273 to 60, I'm going to get 333 Kelvin. So plugging that into my equation, 1 over T... Two, so that'd be 1 over 333 Kelvin, minus 1 over T1, 318 Kelvin. So I do the calculation on the left side. My units of seconds on, or seconds to minus 1 on top, seconds to minus 1 on bottom, cancel. My value would be 1.707 equals negative EA over 8.314. If I do my calculation in the brackets, that's going to give me negative 1.42 times 10 to the negative fourth, and my units will be 1 over Kelvin. So we're going to rearrange this to solve for our activation energy. We're going to get that the activation energy equals 1.707 times 8.314 divided by negative 1.42 times 10 to the negative fourth. And I will get an activation energy of 1 times 10 to the fifth joules per mole. My 1 over Kelvin on top and 1 over Kelvin on bottom cancel. So we would use this method if we only knew k for two values. If we knew k for multiple values, again, we're going to graph it. We would manipulate those k values by taking the natural logs. We would manipulate the temperatures by doing one over the temperature. We would graph it. We would get our activation energy from the slope.